The end of an MMO is truly a sight to behold. Even when the developers don't plan on something special, the players will find a way. A way to express their feelings, to say their goodbyes, and to put an end to their time in this fictional world where they have met friends, where they have formed relationships, and where they have spent many, many days, many nights together. This is not going to be a show about the development or the history of Tabula Rasa. It's not a dead games no one played. Mostly because people played it. If you want to learn more about its development, its history, I suggest you watch the interview done by Nerd Slayer with Richard Garriott. He goes into very, very good details about everything that happened at NCSoft, at Destination Games, about how the game transitioned from one version to another and how he got uh, well, canned while he was in space, I think. This isn't going to be a story about that. It's going to be a story about how the game ended. Because I was there when it ended. I was there on the 28th of February 2009 and I took quite a bunch of screenshots because I could not capture video properly on that PC. You've seen the video I have captured. It's not that great in terms of fluidity, though I may insert it from time to time because I'm not sure if these pictures will fill the time required. I would have done the show sooner, but the pictures themselves were hosted on ImageBam and for a while they were not actually available for some reason. But they have re-enabled them and I'm very happy to have them again at my disposal. One thing I do regret is not enabling names for other players in the screenshots. The screen was already very, very full and I didn't want to drown myself in a sea of names and not see the scenery, the action, the events. Though that does mean that you cannot identify other players via their names in the screenshots. Though if you have played the game, please look over the video, you may see yourself in some of these pictures. If you're playing on that fateful day on the European server. That being said, well... I remember it like it was yesterday. The 28th started like any other day. The population in Centaurus was relatively low and players were trying their best to get to level 50 in the vain hope of having at least a chance of coming out alive in what was to come that night. We weren't sure exactly what was going to happen, but we were promised a massive invasion of Bane, the game's main enemy, that was going to give us what the G-Man promised to Gordon Freeman at the alternate ending of Half-Life 1. A fight he cannot win. As the sun went down, the population of the server started to spike significantly. It was a beautiful sight. Everywhere you would look, you could see players running shoulder to shoulder with NPCs. Just a week before this, it was impossible to see 10 people in the same place. Now there were hundreds. The big event would begin at approximately 2100 hours. So up until then, I was busy doing the necessary preparations, which involved some unorthodox tactics for getting to level 46. The last one I actually managed to get to before heading to Foreas, the base Foreas, on the divide zone of the Concordia region of the planet Foreas. As far as I knew, the Bane were going to attack each and every planet one by one, and it was in these command bases that we would either win or perish. I chose this base because it was the more pleasant one out of the ones that I actually managed to visit by the time the end came. I liked it. I enjoyed the scenery and the fact that the poles with the speakers on them that were put on throughout the base would uh, quite often emit all sorts of funny messages reminiscent of the old MASH television series. I wasn't the only one to pick this base as my last resting place. On the contrary, most of the Centaurus server had moved here within quite a short time. The moments before the invasion were relaxed. People were partying, like they were literally partying everywhere in Foreas. People were dancing, they were shooting fireworks and they were very, very generous with their their stuff with their loot. They would hand out everything they managed to nab in all the years of hard battle. The world was about to end. You can't take it with you. And that's why I got a Torque Shell Rifle. Much in the same way that a couple of months before I, I got the armor for my class from a Romanian guy named uh, Von Hellman in the game. Sadly, I did not actually get to see him again in the final battle. It wasn't that night that I actually got to see with my own eyes what power armor looked like in Tabula Rasa. Not just one 
one variant, but many of them. The place was filled with players trying to show everything they had. And for unknown reasons, they got a sort of obsession with a catwalk that was traversing the base. Everybody climbed up on it to the point where you couldn't throw a pin in there because there was no room and also they didn't use pins, they used bombs. It was a very good photo opportunity, reasons for which I can actually see myself in pictures taken by other people who had better PCs. My system was sadly kind of chugging away at its final breath when I was in that area. It's, it's still working, but it wasn't working well there. Not with hundreds of people standing on a single bridge. There was a beautiful show all around me, but I kept getting the feeling of wanting to go to the battlements and stand guard. A battle was approaching, I could feel it in my bones, the anxiety, the fear, the anxiousness. Enough to keep me awake at a time when I mostly wouldn't be awake unless I was working on something. And then there came a small problem, one I hadn't seen since the beta test. Lag. The high concentration of people were sort of reaching the limits of the server, so the moderators tried to get the people to stop climbing onto the catwalk and go somewhere else. There, there's some more planets on the server, it's not just this one, but they wouldn't. So they tried to make uh, more instances of the game, of the server of Foreas, and they did. And that sort of handled it. Now, from this point onward, I would really like to put Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds on the soundtrack of the show, but I can't. However, you can. That's why the music on the show is maybe a bit lower than it used to be on the normal shows. So start that song. It's a beautiful song and loop it because I feel it kind of fits for what happens next I was assigned to the instance of Foreas 3 and then started the rumors of Bane attacking the planets Arieki and the continent of Valverde They weren't concrete reports We didn't have what you would call a network of uh, information that would keep us up to date with current events Yeah, we did have global chat, but not between the different shards and pretty much every message you would see there was one of nostalgia and people being very very sad that this was the last day of their lives on this server. In the area that I was stationed in, there was one control point still under ban occupation and fearing that this is where the war started, I went there and massacred every alien I could, only to find out that they weren't an invasion force, just one classic Bane patrol that were profiting from the fact that every player was in the base and no one was guarding the edges of the map, so they took it over. The word was going around that the true invasion force was going to strike soon and it would be made out of epic grade Bane. The kind of creatures for which uh, you would need several high level players to defeat. So pretty much not me. Sure, level 46 isn't far away from 50, but I didn't exactly have level 50 gear for which you would have to, you know, do some crafting, participate in some raids and work for, kinda. But sadly I didn't have the time to get that kind of gear. The Bane attacks intensified them until we got concrete news of the invasion. If I remember right, it started in Arieki. Epic Great Bane were accompanied by enemies that we had never seen before up until then. The Neph. The ones that began the war. The ones we'd probably be fighting against in future expansion packs of the game. The ones that never came. A report came from a player that was in battle with them saying that the enemy was immune. That, that wasn't anything special, I mean, we had a lot of immune characters in the game, that's why it was usually necessary to carry around five different weapons each allowing you to deal with enemies that were immune to a certain kind of effect, you know, cold, lightning, energy, physics, stuff like that. We asked him, to what weapon is it immune? And he said, you don't understand, the Neph are immune to everything. You could kind of hear the entire population of the server going in chorus. The siege of Arieki began. The administrators decided to ease our suffering and started sending reports of the exact zones that would be attacked. Even if I wanted to defend Forest base, I couldn't stand there and do nothing, just waiting for them to come to me while the world burned. So the first chance I got, I went to the plains area of Toden on the planet of Arieki and found a very peaceful region. The central base was safe, but it seemed that when the command center would be attacked, it will already be too late. To end the invasion, we would need all the control points. We would need constant backups and NPC armies. They weren't all that strong compared to the Bane, but a mech is still a mech. We captured all the control points and again there was peace and quiet. 
under that sitting gigantic sun everything was peaceful for just a few more minutes that's when they came a massive number of banes so powerful that when i shot them you could not see if i had actually damaged them the life bar would not flinch thankfully i was not alone there were players around me much much more capable and still it was a slaughter but it was just by sheer miracle that i managed to not die mostly because i was being held by a technician that i had been summoning around me for the past couple of months fate it would seem smiled upon us because we did not run into a single nef with one victory under our belts we went back to Ferreira's base and started patrolling and that's when Tabula Rasa had some technical problems and I had to go out of the game for a while and when I got back I found the button that allowed me to teleport to the cellar out of curiosity I went there a few weeks ago the cellar the area right under the AFS main base was in the process of being renovated it was blocked off but now it wasn't and behind the giant metal doors there was a massive space gate like the one near twin pillars if you play double ross i mean the destination was the same planet earth i did not miss a beat and went as fast as i could back home to see what was left of new york city the bane presence in the area was minimal so i could easily slip through the streets and get to fort lexington and then to a massive crater with a control point on it under afs control i would have probably stayed there for a while but a message came through the official lines. Neff spotted near Oliadas, Wilderness Region, Concordia, Planet Foreus. Willing to make sure that the first area I ever got to see in the game would not fall because this was the tutorial area, I hurried there as fast as I could. The control points in the Imperial Valley and the landing zone were taken over by the invading Bane. Something that would usually happen about three times a day, especially in the Imperial Valley, it being very lightly defended. Both zones were taken back after about 15 minutes of very difficult fighting. The landing zone especially was where we saw one of the most memorable scenes of that battle. In the very second we managed to capture that point, three AFS dropships came down from the sky bringing in NPC reinforcements. Again, NPCs could not actually do much but the visual of it. It was like seeing the cavalry coming. It was like seeing Gandalf come with the riders of Rohan to help fight against the orc invasion at Helm's Deep. It was beautiful. But there was no place for celebration because we were informed to go immediately back to earth to get there we all had to go through the cellar only now that place was filled with neff they just stood there staring at us as if we were nothing more than cattle being sent to the slaughter the cellar contained teleporters to every major area of the game from both planets the ones for arieki were all inactive and so was the one for Phoreas. i had missed my chance to defend my beloved base which was now in the hands of the enemy the earth Earth was a different story now. Bane were everywhere and we would be fighting tooth and nail to get to the control points. Through the ruined buildings, among the overturned cars, through the metro tunnels that were filled with enemies, hundreds of players made their way to the last battlefield. To the place where the fate of the galaxy would be decided. We found the final control point under enemy control with Neff among them. But now they were not so involved vulnerable but still not as easy to turn into paste as i was but within a few minutes we managed to get it it was ours we were near the end 40 minutes to midnight to the end of the world what followed was probably one of the most ferocious battles you would ever see in an mmo wave after wave of bane and neff poured into the heart of the crater very often succeeding in casting us out back to our first aid point from which we came back time and time again angrier by a minute the cycle repeated until all the nations of the bane all their war machines all the monstrosities all the dark aberration of space and every nef passed through fire lasers sound wave hail of bullets and the sight of every weapon in the game i dropped more bombs on the heads of bane soldiers in that hour than i did in the past week only one thing 
disturbed us truly in that moment. The announcement that the server was going to be closed in 20 minutes for maintenance and it would come back in a few hours. Hope suddenly flared. Could have NCSoft seen reason and showed mercy? Was this all just a scam to get people interested in Tabula Rasa? Oh, the naive hope of dreamers. One of the admins clarified saying that the wrong message went out and the person responsible was fed to a bunch of sharks. Five minutes before the end, things became very clear. The Earth was the only planet still under AFS control. Every other world was burning. There were still people there trying to save what they could, but without reinforcements, they would not have any chance. The war was lost. All that was left was this, the final battle. The Neff promised they wouldn't leave Earth in peace and attacked at the same time all together, with every bane we'd ever seen in one final devastating attack that stretched as far as you could see. From every nook and cranny there poured into that crater enough bane to blot out the sun. As many as there are grains of sands in a desert, as many as there are stars in the sky. An unstoppable wave of death that crashed upon a wall that could not be moved. One formed by each and every AFS member that did not give up on this game even now in the final moment. The the result was apocalyptic. It was 1.59 a.m. local time, March 1st, 2009. The final countdown had begun. After hours of endless battle, there was peace. People were saying goodbye. The admins and the team that was handling the event thanked everybody there, thanked them for their support, and in one single moment, it all stopped. This was not a happy ending. The two planets on which we still had colonies were lost. All that was left of the allied free sentient forces were in that crater in New York. Without a doubt, we had lost the war. But at least we took a couple of million Bane with us and every Neff we could. And in the process, we forged a legend that would go on for ages, that at the end of the world, on the darkest day, thousands of people stood unflinching in the face of an infinite empire that devoured the entire galaxy. And we didn't do it for fat loot, not for the experience grind, not to sell gold, but for tabula rasa. And so this story comes to an end. One end. Before the final battle started, there were rumors that the Black Ops division of the AFS had developed a doomsday device. Some players decided that that's how the world ended. That when the walls came down, when the final wave of Neff invaded, that doomsday device was set off, and even though it destroyed what was left of humanity, it also took the Neff with it. Not just on Earth, but on Arieki, on Phoreas, on Eradas, and on whatever other planets there would have been in this game, leaving behind a new galaxy, one free of the Neff and of the Bane, a clean slate from which to begin anew.